In the book Five Views on Biblical Inerrancy, I contend for the view known as classical inerrancy. The definition of inerrancy that was ensconced in the Chicago Statement on Biblical Inerrancy back in the late 1970s. The reason why I hold that is because I believe it's necessary to a full affirmation of biblical authority. Those who gathered and who constructed that document, creating a consensus for evangelicals at that time, did so over against denials of biblical inerrancy and a certain amount of confusion about what inerrancy was all about. So they sought to define it. And they defined it by saying that since God has given his revelation to us verbally and directly, it is absolutely consistent with his own character and with his own perfection. The second step then follows from that. Any backing off of the doctrine of inerrancy, any compromise on this is inescapably, those are their words, a denial in some sort or a weakening of the full measure of biblical authority. I think if you go back, you understand they did exactly the right thing. I want to affirm that the way they defined inerrancy was absolutely defensible, right, and probably still about the quintessential way we could describe biblical inerrancy, even in terms of contemporary challenges. But there are some contemporary challenges, and that's why a book like this is important, because we need to come back and look at those definitions. And coming back, I want to contend that they got it right in the late 1970s, that the full definition of biblical inerrancy found in the Chicago Statement must be fully embraced by this generation of evangelicals, or we too will find ourselves weakening and compromising biblical authority. Well, in this book, my position is that inerrancy is not a word that describes how the Bible behaves. It actually imposes onto the Bible um, a way of behaving, a way of acting that the data of the Bible don't conform to very easily, at least not without a tremendous amount of stress and I think cognitive dissonance as well. And you know, my position, I, I arrived at that position, I guess I moved towards it over the years from uh, reading a Bible that has, it contains things like um, very diverse points of view on topics which you expect from a book that's written over lengthy periods of time. Um, you have disagreements among authors of biblical books. Um, the Bible describes uh, things historically that seems to be under, uh, described as historical moments that probably are not historical moments. Uh, and inerrancy is not a word that, in my opinion, captures that dynamic. There are other words we can use, perhaps. Um, but inerrancy, and especially how inerrancy is, how it functions in, in a conservative context as sort of a gatekeeper doctrine, saying you may not go past this interpretation because we know the Bible is inerrant. Um, in that sense, inerrancy functions as a way of, I think, obscuring um, a, a deeper interaction with the biblical text and what it's doing.